Welcome into K State Online. Mason Voth, Drew Galloway here with you with yet another video because there was another commitment for the Wildcats yesterday. Uh, very rarely will this be something that uh, gets walk on attention, but this is a special circumstance for the latest ad for the Wildcats in 2024 because this is no ordinary walk on. Navarro Shunky is a guy that everybody talks about how great of a wrestler is, is that he's been a four-time state champion, and he's only a senior in high school, which means he could be a five-time state champion. Uh, so just being that dominant as an eighth grader tells you a lot. But he is a, a four-star, according to some services. You can see it below 24-7. ESPN having him as a four-star. He's on the edge there with on three and rivals, and, and so he works out to being a pretty high-level three-star in the industry rating. Who knows? Maybe he could get the bump up by the – the time everything is all said and done. So a lot of people are probably confused. Why is this guy walking on? Why is he not getting a, a scholarship? And what's so unique about this situation? Uh, so clear that up for everybody, Drew, before we talk about what kind of player this could be for K-State. Yeah, so it's a, it's the rare, like really highly rated walk-on commit where he had, I think, eight other Power 5 offers. Um, but the reason that he wants to walk on is he wanted to be at K-State really bad, and K-State doesn't know if they have the scholarship flexibility yet because they're uh, still going after Grant Bricks in, for the offensive line. And Navarro Shunky ha is a Native American, so he gets a full ride kind of no matter where he goes because of that. And that's kind of led into him being a preferred walk-on commit. And honestly, it just goes to show, and I put this on the board yesterday, that it's just a testament of how uh, strong of a relationship he had with not only Connor Riley, but also Taylor Bratt, because they were both really involved in this process of getting him to think about walking on and then eventually him walking on. It, it's... Similar in ways to uh, Jacob Knuth uh, last offseason where he's good, he's good enough to be on scholarship, but you can take him as a preferred walk-on. And then, you know, there's always going to be attrition uh, later on. So, like, with Knuth, it was good because you could put him on scholarship later on. With Shunky, it's kind of like uh, Walter Neal where uh, his – his parents uh, had the GI Bill, so he never needed to be a scholarship player because he got his uh, schooling all paid for. But it's really interesting because, I mean, you say uh, he's a four-star on two services, a high three-star on the other ones. He would actually be the highest-rated uh, commit in the industry rankings on on three. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at him, and it, it, it makes sense with, with the background and how he can play and the sizes there. I mean, he's listed at 6'5", 285 uh, as as currently an offensive lineman. Like, there's a lot to like, and you talked about the offers, too. I mean, if you go through and look, Nebraska, KU, Tennessee, Auburn, Pitt, Illinois, Arizona State, uh, all teams that had had offers out to Navarro Shunky, and he ends up picking the Wildcats. So, I mean, I think that there might be this – this thought in some people's head that, oh, well, you know, he's going the walk on way. So this is kind of a weird deal. That's probably why K State got him. No, he could have done this anywhere and he chose to do it at K State. Uh, and that's, that's still a pretty significant get for them. As for what he can be as a player, right now he's listed as an offensive lineman. I know that there's a lot of chatter about maybe him ending up on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, how do you kind of, you know, break down where, where all those conversations will go? Um, honestly, a move to defense wouldn't surprise me, especially if they land Grant Bricks, because that would be, excuse me, that would be six total offensive linemen just in this class, and then nine in the last two. So a move to defense wouldn't be the most surprising thing, uh, especially with him having a wrestling background. I mean, we, we've seen that with uh, Damian E. Laleo. We saw it with... Um, uh, just a few other players like Will Geary with, was one that yeah. was mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Will Geary, like playing with leverage is something that like, if you move to defense is something that you need to know. And it, with the wrestling background, defensive tackle wouldn't be the most surprising thing, but for right now, he's going to be an offensive lineman. I mean, he tagged Connor Riley in the commit uh, tweet and that's kind of why he wanted to come to K state. Um, Navarro Shunky 
think so much of Connor Riley that he probably didn't need to, but he came to a K-State camp this summer because he just wanted to learn from Connor Riley and kind of get his feedback because uh, if you know anything about Connor Riley, he'll he'll tell you how it is. If it, and he's not afraid to give a lot of feedback. And I mean, you go to a K-State camp and he will have the longest line after everything is all done because he goes through and tells every single kid that's there, like what they need to work on, like what he thought they did well. Like it, it's this whole thing about him that just says a lot about him as a coach. Um, but on the offensive line, uh, Shunky is definitely an interior guy. He is a road grader. He he likes to move people and likes to get out in space and just move them backwards. I mean, I his tape is really funny to watch, number one, because he's just so much bigger than everybody else playing in South Dakota. But he is not afraid to move people. Um, so you're kind of you're getting more of like a Cooper BB ish, like road grader style where, but without the positional flexibility, but I mean, this is where his ceiling is through the roof and saying that as a walk on is wild. So that is the book on Navarro Shunky and another good pickup for the Wildcats are starting to get some more and more momentum in this class. And I think, you know, there's a lot of concern about where things were heading at one point. Now, if you kind of look around and, and where things sit with K-State, everything is moving in the right direction. And, and you said it, D.Y. said it, I've said it. It's going to be a small class, but they're loading it up with guys that fit the profile of what they need a lot. And now you're finding more and more guys that have some serious upside where you can see uh, that they can contribute at a pretty high level. And obviously, Navarro Shunky is uh, the, the biggest indicator of that with uh, the pickup. So, I guess the last thing I'll ask of you, what what's the next move for K-State recruiting-wise? What what should everybody be on the lookout for? Uh, the, the next move is kind of like a, a wait and see. There may be an official visitor for uh, the Baylor game on November 11th. Just kind of depends on what time that game is. And ha- having the seven-day window doesn't really help that yeah. situation uh, a whole lot. But is there... It's kind of a a wait and see because this class is going to be a lot smaller. There's probably only five to seven more spots left. Grant Bricks is still out there. I know he was just at uh, Nebraska, but it wouldn't be surprising to see him visit K-State and Oklahoma again. So everybody kind of just went all in and was like, oh, it looks like it's going to be Nebraska because he finally took another visit. No, it might not be still. It, it, it is surprising to me that he is taking visits now after he said he wasn't going to. But I think the longer that it plays out with Bricks, it might end up being better for K-State in the long run. Uh, it's it's very similar to Asa Newsom last year, where kind of the longer that it plays out, the longer that K-State gets to hang around. And, you know, K-State's known him the longest and has been talking to him the longest. So it's one where running out the clock could be good for K-State. Yeah, um, chance, and, chance that the Wildcats get the last visit there out of him and, and be the last oh, thing yeah. in his mind. And then kind of the, the other, there's a few other potential flip targets that are, have been kind of thrown out there, but we'll see. I mean, they only have, they can be very selective because they probably only have five to seven more spots left. I know that they want a third linebacker, uh, but that a, a name hasn't really popped up yet. I know that uh, Jay Sean Ross, who visited for the TCU game uh, on the 21st, he will be at Alabama this weekend. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see kind of what plays out there. Yeah, that's probably the the biggest one right now that people have their eyes on. Because I think with, with the way that things are going with the BRICS recruitment, it's kind of on the back burner for a lot of people unless it's time to freak out about, oh, he's going, he's going to Nebraska, he's going here. Um, But with the Jay Sean Ross thing, that's one of those that felt a lot more real and quickly obtainable for K-State in the recruiting game. And now that uh, Nick Saban and Alabama are in the mix, who knows? And that'll be something to to watch uh, with with pretty tight eyes. So that is the update right now on K-State football recruiting. The class continues to grow. They're adding quality players. And Navarro Shunky certainly fits that bill. K-State 
gets a good one there. So that will do it for Drew and I. Stay locked in with KSO for all of your K-State recruiting and team needs as the Wildcats try to fill out this class before signing day in December, and the team tries to get back to Arlington for the Big 12 title as uh, the things roll on, and, of course, Texas this weekend. So that will do it for this edition of a recruiting roundup. Thanks to Drew. I'm Mason. Thanks for watching K-State Online.